Hey everybody, good morning. Well, maybe afternoon, I'm not sure. This is Dave, I'm out at the bee yard. And uh, despite it being an incredibly unnaturally warm October day, today's October 29th, we are running with some 80 degree weather yesterday and could be close to that again today. Uh, this is it, this is the last hurrah for the bees. They're gonna, um, they're gonna be going to bed here soon. And I want to make sure, of course, that I am ready for them to do that. So one of the last things you do in the, um, in the fall is to put what's called a blanket shim, or what I call a blanket shim. Uh, I think other people call it that. I don't know. Over the top of the hive. And so to explain this, I'm going to turn you around a little bit and uh, just show you a hive and get, so you can get an idea. Hang on one second. All right, so here we have a pretty typical hive. This is two deep boxes with a uh, with a still got a honey super on top. Probably had some uh, had some um, resource in it, and I was just left it on. It's not a big deal. Uh, the hive, the bees. I'm gonna. This is the uh, blanket shim. It just doesn't have the chips in it yet. Um, so the bees are gonna start out roughly down here in this bottom box. This bottom box has lots of resources. This next. Uh, oh no, that's not too deep. That's a uh, uh, that's a um, deep box and two supers. Okay, so um, this is full of honey. This is full of honey. Hopefully this is full of honey as well. That's plenty of resources for them for the fall. They've been collecting like crazy on uh, the goldenrod, which is just now fading in coastal Maryland. However, I have uh, chamomile that is still, you see that white over there. There's just knots of it everywhere. I planted it years ago and it's naturalized all around the corners, edges of the property. So it works out well. The bees go to it after the goldenrod's done. Um, they still get a lot of pollen. They're still bringing in a lot of pollen from that goldenrod or from that, excuse me, from what's left of the goldenrod as well as that chamomile because that chamomile is pretty much the only thing blooming right now that's left. So that, uh, that is an aside. Okay. So the in winter time, the bees are going to start down here. They're going to form a ball when it gets really cold. And the queen is somewhere roughly in the middle. The bees surround her and they vibrate. And as they vibrate, they, their body temperature increases or they let off heat. And the inside of this box, this, this hive, will rise up to about 90 degrees, possibly even a little more. And what happens is, is you see the entrance. They've I've already put entrance reducers on, and uh, oh, you can even, there's even a bee going in with some pollen. Um, I've already put the entrance reducer on, and they're mad today because they want to fly so well, and the entrance is so small. So it's a bit of a bottleneck for them, but that's all right. So what's going to happen is, is as those bees get hot and the temperature outside drops, let's say the temperature outside gets down to 30, 25 degrees it creates a tunnel effect or a chimney effect, excuse me. And what happens is the air comes in, it rises up and the bees that are sitting there vibrating, they heat it up. And then when it hits this top, this top is just, you know, the cover and the inner cover, if that's cold and that hot moist air hits that cold roof and the roof is going to basically form, it's gonna form condensation and what can happen is, is that condensation drips back down on the bees. The bees actually will get almost rained on is the, is the effect. Now, we don't have too many months where it's that cold here in Maryland. But January and February, we, we talk temperatures that, you know, average lows that are well below 32 degrees. So it certainly will, it certainly can be a problem. And while the bees can do pretty good staying warm when they're dry, they do a very poor job of staying warm and healthy when they're wet and cold. So what we're gonna do today is remedy that. So this is a wooden shim. It's uh, 16 inches wide, 20 and a quarter inches long. And this will fit right on the top of the hive, right up here, um, right, below, right below the box of uh, the lid. It's made out of simple one by wood. It's cut to two and a quarter inches. I do have a miter saw. The joints are mitered. That's not the strongest 
joint that you could have. However, these don't really support any weight. They're not gonna get heavy. There's not gonna be honey in them. So they don't have to support a lot of weight. You can buy them. I don't know, they're $10, $15. If you have the equipment, you can make them. And uh, they're about two bucks a piece, maybe, that they, that they cost me. Um, so what we do is, to the measurements I said, 16 by 20 and a quarter. So then the other thing we do is we take a cross beam and as you can see, that cross beam is smooth. You don't want to lay it from the outside edge to the outside edge because then what happens is, is you create a, you create a gap there and the bees can't stay warm. So this cross piece is flush with the bottom of the hive. It's just stapled in there with a crown stapler and uh, some glue. It has dab some glue on it so it'll hold. And what that cross member does is we're gonna fill this with wood chips, with, uh, I use cedar, you can use pine. I've seen, also heard of people just laying pieces of fabric like, uh, like um, burlap in, in there and cover it up. And this sits right under the cover on the top of the hive. When the hot air comes up, hot moist air comes up through those wood chips, through that burlap, whatever you decide to use, they suck the moisture, much of the moisture out. Any moisture left that then hits the roof and may condensate, when it falls back down, it's only fallen this far because this is right under the roof, that will, um, the water will fall on those chips and not down to the bees that are farther down in the box. So hopefully it'll be, uh, when I show it, it'll be, make more sense. But I just wanted to show you the hive the I, uh, the uh, the shim that I do for these before I ended up filling them with chips and everything. This is just regular screen from the hardware store. I have a uh, one of those big staplers that you know does the what are they T50 staples, and I just went right around the edge on the inside. Everything is everything is attached on the inside because we don't want to attach it here on the bottom because again, just like that crossboard, it will. Um, it'll create a gap and the bees will have to deal with that all winter long as far as uh, either intruders like in the form of, you know, hive beetles and things like that, or as far as moisture or and definitely wind getting in and uh, chilling the bees. This cross member, I don't think I said, the, the reason for the cross member is, is that when we get this, when I get this full of chips and you'll see, they actually weigh this screen down and the screen will really bow on you. So we put this cross member in here and that keeps the, it keeps the screen once it's full of chips from sagging down into the hive, keeps it up out of the way and gives them some room. And so, like I said, I just staple it all around. We do staple several times to the cross member, the screen. The reason for that being is again, because it bows, if I don't staple to this cross member, then the sag is the whole way across, if that makes sense, and it's stretching. By stapling here, we have two sections that may sag, but they're shorter, so they will sag less. And that's literally just something that I kind of figured out from doing this incorrectly the last two years. This is probably my best shims, the best shims I've done. Oh, and the only other thing, in the back, we drill some holes. These are small enough. They're covered by screen on the inside anyway. Bees or hornets or wasps really can't get in there. And if they get in there, they're just going to die in the chips. They're not going to be able to get back out. However, that lets that, once that moist air comes up, hits that roof and it's sitting there, that helps create more of a chimney effect. And it, that hot air will, a hot moist air will escape through the back as opposed to falling down on the bees. Okay, let's get into some bees. I know that was a long intro, but I just wanted to talk about the hows and whys, and we'll be right back and I'll have my hat on. All righty, so. I'm going to try and make this quick. I know I had a long intro. I know I'm long-winded. I get it. I appreciate if you're still with me. Uh, I always appreciate all of you, everybody that stops and listens or views our channel. I uh, would ask humbly if you uh, appreciate what you see here. 
that you do hit that like, share, subscribe, show the algorithm who's boss, and that you loved Observationist Dave. Uh, that would be fantastic. So, um, that would be amazing, yes. So, this is our hive that we've had on for a while. What we did, ended up doing, if you remember, was after the treatment, we did leave an empty box on because I was concerned about the fumes. Well, today that empty box is coming off. So, this is a bit of an experiment. I generally do two deep boxes or a deep box and two supers. This hive, however, looks to be, it's going to only be um, one super. So a deep box and a honey, su a, a, a honey super, which if you're not, uh, if you're new to beekeeping, those are smaller, shorter, so they hold less honey. However, they look like they're doing pretty good. Let me see if I can't find one here. And we'll check just one. I don't want to get down into the hive and end up possibly injuring the queen or uh, other bees because we're to the point of year now where she's really not laying a lot of eggs. And so we just got to be careful. And, yep, we got a decent amount of nectar there, if you can see. That glisten, hopefully. Oh, I got to put my gloves on. Um, and on this side, we've got a little bit of comb and uh, a little bit of a capped comb as well as they're still making more. Um, as I said in the intro, we do, uh, we do have a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, of this chamomile still blooming and they're getting a lot from that. Okay, but what we're here for today is the, the showing you this blanket shim. So what happens is, is we take this, and we're gonna lay this right over top. You can see, remember I, I showed you the cross piece and the screen does lay down on the top a little bit, but it does have some uh, pockets there. And all we're gonna do, uh, this is wood chips from, I don't know, tractor supply or the local place, I'm not sure. And I'm going to throw some in here. And these wood chips, these are cedar. Cedar does not hurt the bees. They're fine with it. Cedar is, however, a nice deterrent for some other pests that may get in here. Beetles and things like that. That's why I like using cedar because it, it, it helps deter the, um, the other stuff. Now, this cedar is all different sizes. So... Just like panning for gold, I'm going to do this, but I don't want to do it over the hive because I don't want the hive to get all those little tiny pieces of wood down in there. So I'm shaking it here. And even with that fine screen, I don't know if you can see this, there's stuff that falls through, but that's okay. We will be all right. We're going to add a little more. We want to have a blanket in there. We want it to be at least an inch thick. We, again, as I said earlier, we're in coastal Maryland. We don't get brutal winters, but we do generally get some cold weather, and we want to make sure that we've got enough of a resource for that. So again, I'm shaking it, just getting rid of some of that dust and uh, little tiny pieces that throughout the course of the winter would fall through the screen so that that's not going on all winter long. And I'm gonna grab one more handful here, just to, there we go. All right. So our shim is done. I'm gonna set it right on top there. Now they have a top entrance in the box right below this that they can get in and out of. That's no problem. Then they also have a bottom entrance down here where the um, where the robbing screen is, which helps keep other bees from attacking them. And I will show you that in one second. It's got several entrances. We're going to go ahead and close one of them today because I know that tomorrow we are going to have a brutal cold snap come. And so by closing 
the entrances, even though the entrance on the inside is wide open, closing the outside entrances means, oh, that we start reducing the amount of that cold air coming in. And see this? So all winter long, I've or all summer long, excuse me, I scrape all this off and get rid of it. See, that's the propolis that seals the hive shut. We're in October. I don't want to scrape that off. I want them to seal this thing up tight. And so I'm not going to undo what they've just, what they've been doing in the last few weeks in order to seal their hive up. And in fact, see, we're going to press it down here so that they get as good of a seal as possible. And we're done. And uh, we're going to take the, this is the top box. We're all lined up and we're good to go. And that is all there is to it. Uh, hang on one second. Let me get to you. Okay, I'm back. I uh, went ahead and did the, uh, I did our community hive first. I've still got all the other hives to do. That's why I've still got the, the coat and the veil on. That's pretty much it. It's a uh, pretty non-intrusive um, uh, procedure. I'm not going to sit in, in late and in late October and go digging through the hive. I've checked the hive. Uh, last time on my last check Queens were in place uh, if I notice that there's something amiss then we'll have to deal with it as far as a queen being gone or absent or something has happened however I have no reason to believe that in uh, three weeks two weeks that there's been any sort of issue and so we'll go with that and uh, I'm not gonna go certainly not gonna go digging for you pull those boxes apart like I said earlier and you pull that propolis apart and you break their seals and then you're uh, allowing cold air and uh, elements to get in during the winter. We want to keep that sealed. So that's it. And uh, the cedar will catch the water, filter the water almost as, as it were by, um, by soaking it up as it goes through in the chimney effect. And then the, any moist air left over will vent out the back through the drill holes that I showed you. So. If you have any questions or comments or a better way to do it, I'd love to hear from you. Love, uh, please leave it in the comments below. And uh, this is Dave. Stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one.